Hello, Republic of Gamers, and welcome to ROG Pulse episode number three. My name is Jake, Solid Jake Kalinski, and we are here with another podcast this week going into the hottest topic in all of the tech world, the RTX, or the GeForce RTX 30 series, and, well, the new cards we have on the way. But as always, I'm joined here by an illustrious panel of brilliant minds, Jeff Campman, welcome to the show for the first time. Jeff, what is your role here at Asus? Hi, everybody. So I am the basically the editor for all of our technical marketing content that you see for on the rog.asus.com site and edgeup.asus.com. All right. So, yeah. That means you got to know a lot of a lot of insight on everything across yes. the board. The knowledge is there. <laughs> Sasha, once again, joining us here. Sasha, you've got a new face with you today. Yeah, uh, this is one of my team members. So, Jerome, Hi welcome. Guys. Thank you. He's part of the technical marketing team here in HQ. And for anyone who's wondering about the pauses, uh, yeah, we're in Taipei. So, uh, <laughs> there's quite some delay uh, between all of us talking. Technology. It's not there yet. It's just not there yet. The technology, Darn, it's, yeah. speed of light. it is right in front of you. Curse technology that people would, would, would kill for. <laughs> <laughs> of course, and if someone should make the speed of light faster. Yeah, it's... Uh, well, that's, that's going to cause some other problems. It, it will. <laughs> that, that deep, lovely voice you just heard was the voice of Chris Barr. Chris, welcome, friend. Thanks, Jake. How's it going? Chris is one of our writers, also working on the content team, and he does a lot of cool stuff in the video world as well. And, you know, we, we're all obviously fans of these cards. I think that's the key, is we're all really excited mm -hmm. about the RTX 30 series. We saw the NVIDIA announcement a few weeks back, and we're getting there. We're getting there. They're super hard to get. Everybody knows right, right now, out of stock, you look at any website that, you, that has it listed. It doesn't matter who makes it. It doesn't matter what it is. They're hard to get. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have any any real news on that front, but we do have some great news as to what these cards are all about. And, uh, you know, we've got some new reviews popping up today on the 3090. We've seen some reviews of the 3080. Jeff, what kind of level up are we looking to see in performance with these cards comparing it to the 2080 Ti? Well, for the 2080 Ti, um... Let, let's start with the 3080 first, and I think the about the consensus is about a 1.7x uh, improvement, so huge at 4K gaming. Um, it yeah, this this card in the past generation, the 2080 Ti was um, the card you needed if you wanted a close to solid 4K 60 experience, and the 3080 uh, starts at 699 uh, US and it's almost twice as fast at 4K. So it's just a huge level up. And uh, the 3090 is even faster. It's, uh, I think, 18% faster in the case of our ROG Strix card uh, versus the 3080. So it, this is just a huge, the real, this is the kind of generational improvement that PC enthusiasts uh, live for, basically. So pretty safe to assume that we're not just talking about improvements for 4K gaming, but this is how we're going to achieve like the 360 hertz gaming. And this is how we're going to push those limits as well. Because right now you can buy a 360 hertz monitor. They're hard to get. They do exist. Mm -hmm. um, but right. how are you actually going to hit those levels on most games? Yeah. Well, and they'll contribute to that as well. But there are some, there are some um, caveats with 1080p gaming, like it becomes more of a system performance question. The mm. GPU is obviously important, but the CPU has to be able to feed the graphics card the necessary work to turn out all those frames. Um, so yeah, I mean, basically whatever you want to do, these will provide a huge performance improvement. Um, so long as they get fed the work they need. Uh, so 360 Hertz at 1080p, uh, so long as the game engine can run that fast, which is again, a real concern. You know, we can get there. You want to do um, over 144 frames per second at 1440p um, on ultra settings. The, the 3080 will get you there. Uh, 4K gaming, the 3090 and 3080 uh, are just, this is a whole new level of like high refresh gaming experiences at that uh, resolution just weren't available to us before. So yeah, no matter how you want to play, uh, this these are the cards for the moment 
see what you just said is music to my ear is saying 144 hertz you know just at that 1440p because uh, again as a twitch streamer that's what we're looking at for the future very soon we're actually going to be able to hit that for broadcasting and to be able to have mm -hmm. that be the standard to stream and play games on a single card. I mean, when I started streaming, the norm was dual PC setups. And the, the way that the technology has has grown, you don't need a second PC with a capture card just to do the encoding for your stream yeah. anymore. Now we're actually looking at providing insane power. You can't even SLI these cards, right? It's just not even a thing except for the 3090? Yeah, so the SLI is, um, unfortunately, the challenges with SLI are such that um, game developers um, haven't supported as, it as much. Yeah, well, it's kind of going away. Years. It really feels and, like it. Yeah, I, NVIDIA, I think, just recently announced that uh, they're going to stop providing SLI profiles after 2020. So RIP SLI, the 3080 doesn't even have the connector for it. Yeah. Um, the 3090 has the NVLink interface, but that's more for professional workloads where you can take advantage of dual graphics cards still. So, um, but again, like with the performance level that these cards have, you know, you're not missing out on anything. Um, well, there's a lot. Like one single card. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of changes more than just performance gain with these cards. We talk about, the, you know, we've, a lot of people have heard the big notes like, yes, these cards are going to draw a lot of power. Yes, these cards need to have a different style of cooling. And we're going to dive mm -hmm. in to actually dissect that a little bit. So, mm -hmm. Sasha, mm -hmm. you guys have quite the loot in front of you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, unfortunately, we'll have to return all of them after the stream is over. So let's keep this up as long as we can. <laughs> so yeah, um, here on the right side, um, I think you can't see it in a top-down view, right? Um, so here, that's a lovely PCB of uh, Strix RDX 2080 Ti. So this is what the PCB looks like. And there's the actual card. Um, so this is a Strix 2080 Ti. And you can see that's the current generation, the current card. Um, and right last next to it, now. next year, yeah, last generation <laughs> now. <laughs> we got the top 3080 that has received really, really positive reviews, and we got the RG Strix 3080 Ti, 3090, uh, 3090, 3090 Ti right next to it. So we got the 2080 here and the 3090 here side by side. So you can see it's quite a quite a bit bigger. Yeah, mm -hmm. size comparison here. And uh, yeah, you can see those are the NV link connectors that you mentioned. They're covered here on this card. Let me see if I can pull this off. Yeah, so you can see this is the NV link, uh, and this is the 2080 has a different one. And um, yeah, we got the heat sinks as well. So here, that's the heat sink mm -hmm. for the 3090 RG Strix. And over there, we got the heat sink for the Tough 3080. The cool thing about mm -hmm. the Tough 3080 is that it has a separate heat sink for the memory. So mm -hmm. that's just for the GDDR memory. And it has a heat pipe and quite big mm -hmm. thin surface area. So that's pretty cool. On the 3090R. Your finish on that. That's that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, we call that our max contact cold plate. So it's a solid copper plate and uh, polished to super high level of uh, finish, surface mirror finish. And it's in mm -hmm. fact polished so much that on this heat sink, you can see maybe it's with the right angle. There's actually the code that is laser etched into the GPU die. You oh, can wow. read it off of the cold plate of the graphics card. That's how <laughs> mirror polished it is. Wow. So you can see it was actually used. You can even see the code of the GPU it was used on. That's how super flat it's mm -hmm. polished for the highest possible contact surface area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. What about the back plate, sir? Yeah, we got the backplates as well. So this is the backplate of the Strix 3090. And there we got the backplate of the Tough 3080. Oh. So you can see the opening where some of the air actually goes through the card, similar yep. to the reference design. Very cool. And yeah, we got the fan as yeah. well. So yeah. that's the special fan. You might have noticed this is uh, very similar to what NVIDIA is using on the reference cards as well. It has a solid ring around the edge to direct the airflow and increase the air pressure. So this way you get higher air pressure and you can make sure the air actually gets pushed through the heat sink because we're talking about uh, close to three slot, close to triple slot heat sinks where you need a lot of static pressure to push the air all the way through. Um, we've been using this, as you can see, since the 2080 Ti and now have it on the 3080 and 3090 as well. 
that's a really cool special fan. Okay, we got a lot of yeah. toys here to look at, talk about, yeah. and dive into. So let's just jump right into the 3090 and redesigning the cooler for this beast of a mm -hmm. card. I mean, it's a beauty. Look at that thing. <laughs> yeah, that is beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean the the um, so maybe we yeah well, let's take a step back real quick and for anybody who's just tuning into uh, Ampere, which is the NVIDIA code name for this architecture. Um, there we there's a lot of changes that sort of fed into why we had to or why we chose to uh redesign the cards for this generation um so as we've been saying like everything is new in ampere uh, there's a new at the at the very basic level of the gpu the building blocks have changed uh nvidia uh doubled base basically the number of cuda cores per um streaming multiprocessor which is sort of the building block of the nvidia gpu uh, so that alone um, is a huge improvement because, um, you know, graphics is an embarrassingly parallel workload. And the more resources you can throw at it, the faster it goes. That's a beautiful thing in uh, computing. Uh, but the the CUDA cores aren't the only thing that got faster uh, and more capable. They're, the second gen RT cores are twice as fast. The tensor cores are faster and they can, more of them can work together in parallel. Um, and it's a new silicon process built in Samsung's foundries. Um, it's a denser silicon process, which lets the engineers pack more of these functional units onto the chip. Um, and it also has benefits per, for uh, performance per watt. Uh, so every watt of power, you get more performance out of it. Uh, and Jake sort of alluded to this a bit ago, but one of the things, you know, better performance per watt is one thing, um, but for this generation, we also, are able to take advantage of higher board power period uh, in the range of 70 to 100 watts uh, per card to get them, or yeah, for the 3080 and 3090 to extract the most performance possible. Um, so the yeah, the board power has grown this generation. And so that gives us more performance, but it also creates challenges, uh, both for getting power into the card and dissipating the heat. And so that's we we when we um, began our journey to redesigning the Strix card, we said, okay, this is a great time to take a clean sheet of paper. Let's redesign this from the ground up uh, to work uh, each piece working together in harmony to create the best cooling, the lowest noise levels possible, and deliver the best performance. And yeah, so you can and see I think the we've Strix. Done that. You, we, yeah, I, the uh, the re initial reviews of the Strix card have been really nice too. Um, so yeah, so as Sa Sasha was showing off the Strix cooler a moment ago, um, it's you can t tell from the comparison to the thirty or the uh, twenty eighty Ti next to it, like the twenty eighty Ti there has our uh, the same basic industrial design we've been using for quite some time. Um, it's you know it's sort of iconic with the ROG brand. You can look at that card and say, oh yeah, that's ROG. Um, but this card, it's a bold new look, I think. Um, and it, it really, it's just, you know, it, it's really distinctive. Uh, there's a full length addressable RGB LED strip on the uh, left mm -hmm. side facing out of your case. Um, so that's gonna, and we're going to be able to show stuff like system temperature on that or GPU temperature on that. Uh, so it's just a, yeah, I mean, I, I really like the redesign. Um, and yeah, we can actually look at some of the various patterns that um, you could use, I mean, if you've ever owned an ROG product, which I assume a lot of people have, um, especially here on this stream, there's, it's pretty much the standard array that you get from Aura, but it's, it's still cool to see mm -hmm. this tying in. It looks like a little bit of the light bleeds onto the fans behind the strip. Do mm -hmm. you guys know for sure if that's how it actually is? Well, I haven't seen it in person. Yet. Yeah, see, I, I, I haven't think, either. Yeah, I, I think it'll. Yeah, I think it'll. We have, uh, be some, and uh, we're gonna yeah. power the cards up a bit Ooh, later. Okay. Okay. okay cool. Ooh, okay. so we're gonna yeah. get a first peek at it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and then so, in the um, in the future, aren't we doing some more with the with those addressable RGB strips? Yeah, we'll, there will be. Yeah, I, I, there will be an update for Armory Crate that lets you mm -hmm. do that mon active monitoring of temperatures and stuff among other things. That's really cool. So, mm -hmm. it's, it's functional as well as flashy. 
<laughs> That's um, the best. Yeah. So we're we're expanding so, uh, on the technology for the cooling, um, changing the fans. You know, obviously Sasha was talking about the new plate. What other challenges and what other obstacles did we have to figure out in that process? Yeah, I think I mean the biggest issue is whenever. So like we said, there's seventy to one hundred more watts of power that you have to dissipate, and so that necessitated for the Strix card. We went from a two point seven slot heatsink to a two point nine slot heatsink. Um, with I think it's what's the sorry my notes here yeah I think it, it's thirty percent more uh, surface area it's a big denser fin stack it's a taller fin stack you have to move more air through it um, and that's the so one of the things uh, we went back and did this generation the axial tech fan design that was on our Turing series cards like the twenty eight ETI there. Uh, we were already thinking about this. They have this solid ring around the edge. They have a smaller hub than the average fan. Um, and we, the reason we introduced uh, those technologies was to increase uh, static pressure um, and cubic feet per minute of air the fan can move without increasing noise at a given RPM. Um, and so for the Strix generation, we went there, for this new generation of Strix, we went back and said, okay, what were the what can we improve here? And one of the big um, things was actually turbulence at the intake side of the GPU. Um, Cause each, it, you know, if you have turbulent airflow at the intake side of the GPU, uh, that actually affects the cooling differently um, across the heat sink. So Sasha was showing off, I think, uh, the fan with <clears throat> these notched barrier rings now that we use on the left and right side of the cooler. Uh, and the yep. central fan still uses that solid barrier ring. And the reason why we do that is to create a more, um, I, yeah, I mean, the technical term for it is laminar airflow versus turbulent. Uh, but each fan uh, has more um, directed airflow available to it. And so that improves the airflow characteristics at the central fan and lets us move air uh, over that hottest part of the GPU heatsink better. Um, and we also, use, to further reduce turbulence and uh, further manage airflow, uh, these fans now rotate, they, they have a counter rotating design. So the uh, outer two fans, uh, <clears throat> rotate. I think they rotate clock clockwise and the inner fan rotates counterclockwise. Um, mm -hmm. Regardless, uh, that further uh, improves the airflow characteristics. Um, and they have more blades uh, to move more air. And so I think, the figures are like for static pressure, uh, we went from 2.77 millimeters of water for static pressure to uh, three, um, which is a significant improvement. And the uh, vo the airflow volume as measured in CFMs went from like 46 to 50. So yeah, and the noise, the no from what I've seen, the noise levels are still enviably low. So we really accomplished that goal well. I'm very curious, Sasha. It looks like you just counted the number of blades on the fans to compare them. Did they change? <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> like Jeff mentioned. So on this one, on the 2080 uh, Ti, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, this is the one where I started, right? So I think it's nine. Mm -hmm. And on this it's one, nine. I think it's 13 or 14. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. I put my finger on your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah. So nine versus 13. Mm -hmm. Seems like so, an yeah, excessive number, sink. but it's cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, bigger heat sink, uh, bigger heat sink, uh, more air needs to move through it. Um, we don't want to compromise on noise levels. And so that's how we sort of balance that. Um, and the card also has a, a dual BIOS switch. There's a performance mode and a quiet mode with different uh, fan curves. Um, so if, you, if you're overclocking or you don't mind more noise in exchange for a slightly higher performance, you can use the performance mode. Uh, and that will maximize your airflow. Or if you're like me and you care a lot about how your GPU noise levels, you can choose a uh, quiet mode. Um, and that uh, slightly uh, lowers fan speeds in exchange for slightly higher temperatures. I think the trade-off in perform the clock speed uh, trade-off is minimal. Um, hmm. But you know the performance mode is there if you want it. Um, it's a very, it's a nice uh, flexible element of this card. Very cool. I mean, it seems like there was a lot of different pieces that went into making this 
um, new card, and obviously the reviews mm -hmm. are are speaking pretty pretty highly of it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, even the um, even the PCB design and the backplate have a role to play because with the thirty ninety, you have memory um, memory chips on both sides of the PCB uh, to get twenty four gigabytes, and so the the backplate is. Uh, solid metal. It's it's coupled to those memory chips with uh, thermal pads. Uh, there's a cutout in it that actually allows hot air to escape uh, up through the cooler and into your case's airflow path uh, to improve you know system temperatures. And uh, that air moving over the back plate uh, t takes heat away from the memory modules too. So, what I yeah, thought is, every... is really sorry. No, go ahead, Sasha. What what I thought was really interesting and cool is that even on the Tough 3080, we have those thermal pads on the backplate. And I I mm -hmm. asked our product managers like, wait, but I thought only the 3090 has memory on the back of the PCB, right? So why do mm -hmm. we have uh, pads on there? And he said, oh yeah, actually the memory chips uh, produce so much heat that even the other side of the PCB gets hot. Mm -hmm. So we put thermal mm -hmm. pads on there, so it actually cools the GDDR memory through the PCB because a lot of the heat mm -hmm. goes through the PCB to the back. Oh, so yeah, right. um, and yeah, yeah. It's a so big we, sheet of we, copper. Yeah. So heat moves, and every it. little every little helps. You know, you get the GDR mm -hmm. temperature lower. You can clock them higher. Memory is very mm -hmm. temperature sensitive when you when you talk about overclocking it. Like even five degrees, you can see a difference in the high stable clock. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know, just looking at this this big line of cards, Jerome. I'm pretty sure you're a 2080 Ti. Mm -hmm owner um do, do you feel like you've <laughs> right. been dethroned are you are you sad or are you more excited not at all i i actually bought my 2080 ti back when it came out two years ago so i got my money back pretty much and i'm also still playing at 1440p so i think it's still a good enough cpu for my personal use but definitely i'm really excited about the new series like I'm a very enthusiastic player of sim simulations like the flight simulator or even driving simulations I do a lot of uh, rally games, uh, Formula One games. So, big uh, monitors, yeah, big monitors, monitors, right, monitors, big monitors. For that, you need all the horsepower you can get. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And I remember you were super excited about the new cards when they yeah. came out. You were checking like all the time, and you were checking like how much are the 2080 Ti selling for right now? Exactly. <laughs> how much did I get? For I feel bad for those people panic selling them at 350 yeah. US dollar. Also, yeah, yeah, there were a lot of people panic selling their 2080 Ti's. Yeah, I feel bad for them. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely an improvement on the new series. It must have really sucked. Like, I, I'm sure some people bought a 2080 Ti not too long ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They must be upset. It's nature it's of the beast. Expensive. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, if I mean, you know that... your stuff, right? You don't buy a high-end car just before a new one comes out. So. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, this is the natural order of things. You know, I've had a 2080 Ti since launch, and you know, it, it's a it, it, it's a little bittersweet to know it's no longer the top of the heap, but also the the march of technology. It's like okay, well, there's a new king of the hill now, and you know, that's always a good feeling. Yeah. I... I got my 2080 last uh, last December, and it it was great. It's been a great card, but now as soon as I can get my hands on a Strix 3080, I'm getting it. <laughs> not yeah. not sad about it at all. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I know everybody's been agitating for like you know, those. And I was looking around this morning, and those listings are up now, like on Newegg. Uh, in the US and I think overclockers in the UK and scan in the UK, uh, the, those card listings are up. So they are, will they will be available soon. So you'll have to let us know how it uh, performs for you, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I can get my hands on one, I, I have to oh, get mine just like, like everyone else. <laughs> getting one from, from work or are you, are you buying one? I've, I've tried. I'm going to have to buy one. I, we don't oh, even have right. enough <laughs> to go around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I will so fight, yeah, I I mean, will fight so someone until yeah, I get one. That's all I know. I will right. fight. <laughs> I will get I mean, one. That's the, that's, the, that's the best testament you can have for a product, right? Like, if you can't find it because it's sold out and everybody's buying up the stock mm -hmm. as soon as it, as it comes available, uh, and, and all the retailers and retailers are fighting over the stock. So, that's when you know it's a really nice product. Yeah. I think. 
like everybody's been we've had a long time to like look and say like okay these are coming and everybody's been i think with um the whole pandemic situation in the usa like everybody's been looking at this and saying okay this is coming down the line like everybody's been upgrading their pcs um yeah, there's, so i mean there's been three three major launches hardware launches uh two of them were consoles but in mm -hmm. recent right. weeks and all of them which is sold out like that and it's you're right people people are looking for something to do they're looking for an upgrade from what they have mm -hmm. and these cards mm -hmm. came at a perfect time and and really a perfect price point for upgrading and getting yeah. some serious upgrade for your money so yeah yeah everyone's everyone wants them yeah so we don't have I mean, any con we don't have any mics, uh... go ahead oh, go ahead <laughs> the delay the, the <laughs> delay to taipei yeah. um like, we, we, yeah. we don't have any concrete they're going to be available on this date for you guys unfortunately yeah. i mean it's the the nature of the beast with these things it's uh it's chaos on we're all ends as, we yeah. everybody we're doing we're working as hard as we can yes pretty much get more we want to get them to you as fast as possible that that should be um easy that's enough to goal. say but yeah that's the <laughs> goal but uh yeah. with everything going on i mean it's the same story we we i think we saw nvidia actually say sorry about the bots guys we're, we're doing what we can and we've seen a lot of different mm -hmm. attempts to deal with these bots and stuff across the board it's the same deal with with sony and they gave it to like some of their uh, m most loyal members that gave them VIP access to their own store. So there's, there's like a little, it, it's, it's a, it's a chaotic world we live in. And that's about all we can say. It is. It's slightly weird. Cause I don't remember there being this sort of this, um, snipe bot kind of action on past GPU launches, even though like demand was high and they sold out quickly. Um, well, I think demand like, is higher than ever because like, okay, again, I'm coming from like the streamer perspective, right? I'm just looking at Twitch. Twitch's metrics are like insane. The amount of growth that it's seen as a platform for watching ever since COVID began, but also the number of new streamers like new activated mm -hmm. accounts mm -hmm. is insane. And you go out to buy mm -hmm. a streaming microphone an interface, like an audio interface, any kind of equipment. Um, I mean, we're mm -hmm. talking about laptops availability being tough sometimes across the board. So it's uh, mm -hmm. everybody wants to play video games and I don't blame them. That's what I want to yeah. do. And this is a, this is a great time for, for games. I mean, we just had Microsoft flight simulator come out and it's, it's a gorgeous, but demanding game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And That's a good like, point. I, I know personally, it's like I I want to play it at its highest resolution, at the highest refresh rate that I I can squeeze out of it. And a thirty eighty thirty ninety is absolutely the way to do that. And we've mm -hmm. got Cyberpunk coming up soon, and I know a lot of people are like super excited about that. And these cards are just going to chew through any game yeah. like that, and it's going to be exciting. I hope so. And in VR, I mean, also you know, Alex just came out earlier in the year. Um, we we've all talked about our our experiences yeah. playing that before, but being able to to push VR to you know the the highest graphic settings, making sure you can hit all those high frame rates, uh, people mm -hmm. want to do that. And now it seems like a good time to upgrade for not only your your standard games on a on a traditional screen, but also VR games. So yeah. that's mm -hmm. it's really exciting. It's yeah. the perfect time i think for yeah for i wouldn't mind like playing alex again on uh, hp it's reverb same. g2 you mm -hmm. know like super oh, nice. high resolution uh, with a 30 yeah, i would yeah. i wouldn't mind replaying that again i think i finished it like two or three times already but yeah i i, I can play <laughs> that like five more times no problem <laughs> absolutely yeah. i'm looking forward to that replay but let's uh let's talk a little bit more about the the actual card so if we're looking at um Going ahead, and we, we do succeed at purchasing one of these 3080s or 3090s. <laughs> um, how do I min-max the situation? Because if I've got a machine that was built, a lot of people skip a generation. A lot of people have a 1080 in their machine. Yeah. Um, if I have oh, a machine sure, with a 1080 yeah. in it and an i7, is that going to see a significant boost when I just slap a 3080 inside? Or am I looking at a full rebuild? Well, I mean, it sort of the, the place I would start thinking about this is about power, right? because yeah. it literally yes. at your power supply um because yeah. as we were talking about at the beginning uh it's not just that these cards have better performance for what it's that they are they are more demanding of power to begin with i think uh the uh, 2080 ti topped out at um 250 watts for the stock board power mm -hmm. and 3080 is like 320 um 3090 is 350 
So that right there, you have a hundred, you have higher, much higher board power. Um, the Strix card specifically, uh, we chose to equip it with three PCIe eight pin connectors um, to get the most power directly from the power supply that we could into that card. Um, because the PSU has its own heat sinks and it has an active fan. Um, some uh, 3080 designs can use the 75 watts from the PCI Express slot. Um, that's dependent on the quality of your motherboard. That's dependent on the capacity, still dependent on the capacity of your PSU, but it, it draws power through the 24 pin connector and the EPS connector. Um, so, you know, that, you know, power is so much of a, concern here basically hmm. um and if your if your components aren't up to that um you know that you might be looking at an upgrade there at a minimum for your power supply um because yeah i mean the strix we we push the strix even harder like that that power design lets us uh use a 400 watt uh, board power rating out of the box and the card can be heavily overclocked um so that that's a concern, um, but also, if you're, we were talking a bit about CPU limitations earlier. Yep. Um, if you have an older CPU, I've seen testing where even um, the fourth, gen, I think, yeah, I think fourth generation Intel Core processors, uh, but or Haswell, uh, where you were losing. In in CPU bound situations, you were losing significant amounts of performance, um, just because of how even at fourteen forty p, which didn't used to be the case. Uh, so, if if you are uh, there's there was a time I think where you could let a system go for eight years, eight to ten years, and now we're at the close of that era. Um, so yeah, it it really depends on how you game. Like the lower your monitor resolution, the higher refresh rates you're going for, the more likely it is you're going to have to look at an upgrade if you haven't upgraded within the past uh, couple of years. Um, yeah, so pro tip, if you're at so, home and you're playing on a 60 FPS monitor, 60 Hertz monitor, it's time to uh, yeah. upgrade your display <laughs> before you try to buy a 3080 <laughs> because you're just putting that yeah. 3080 to waste. <laughs> On a display that's <laughs> running sixty, one forty four. Yeah, you're yeah. fine. You're you're good at that point. That's fine. You're good. <laughs> um, yeah, and I mean that's the thing. Also, like display technology. I the the thing I tell people is like, if you buy a high end display, you should expect to get ten years out of it. And um, back when I like first bought my a, a really nice LCD monitor, like that was in two thousand eight or whatever. That was you know nineteen twenty by twelve hundred sixty hertz. Um, no adaptive sync, no variable refresh rate. Uh, monitor technology has just come such a long way in that time. We yeah, talked about 360 yeah. hertz earlier, uh, but 144 hertz now is relatively accessible. Um, 4K 144 hertz uh, is accessible now. Um, it's getting for less there. than a thousand dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you really again. It's like if if you're playing on a 60 hertz monitor. I mean, you aren't seeing everything that the graphics card can do. But that, that's the fun thing so, to, um, to mention, though, because I have a 4K 144 hertz display I'm looking at right here. Yeah, and, you, you know, got I, that XP27 UQ. I, I do. It's Stop a, flexing. It's, so come on. <laughs> it's, so it's, jealous. It's, it's a gorgeous <laughs> display. I, I'm 27 inches. It's just an absolute beaut. But with my, I don't have a 2080 Ti in my machine. I have a 2080. I, I really can't quite push it. If I try to play 4K, mm -hmm. um, I might get 60 FPS. I'm I, depending on, mm -hmm. on like a newer game. And yeah, some games like World of Warcraft, I can hit 100 FPS or something. Um, older games for sure. But 144, I have yet to play a game on ultra settings and achieve 144 at 4K. Mm -hmm. So that's that's yeah. why I'm so pumped. We just got to get you that 3090. Oh, I know, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. Please. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, it's just, it, this is a level of performance. It sort of has its own gravitational field um, as far as like driving upgrades. Um, the, the, the 3080 and the 3090 alike. Uh, like the 3090 is, even, I think one of the coolest things about um, just even the tur sort of the Turing um, Ampere generation that we're in right now, the introduction of DLSS 2.0. Um, that technology that I'm, I'm so excited about that because it enables, um, higher frame rates with basically no loss in image quality. It yeah. works that well. Um, 
it's magic and it's voodoo so magic you, it really is <laughs> yeah yeah uh yeah it's, it's kind really... of like when you remember way back in the days the first time we had some kind of revolution like this was mp3s right so suddenly mm -hmm. you could not really hear the loss anymore you could compress files and you could not hear the loss and then we had the same for video right i remember back in the mm -hmm. days video files were huge and still pixelated and then we had a mm -hmm. revolution of video codecs yep. and now this is kind of like yep. the same thing for games if you think of it right. i yeah, mean there's like a loss but we can't tell it's so little that you can't really right. tell right in in some cases it looks better like it's yeah. better than the native anti-aliasing implementations so i mean it, it yeah i mean dlss 2.0 is just it's really amazing um and with the 3090 i think i've, I've seen some tests where people took you know, we talk about 8K gaming. It's just one of these fun uh, future scenarios. Uh, I, the 3090 with DLSS hitting 90 frames per second or something on average in Death Stranding. Crazy. Hitting 55 frames per second That's at incredible. 8K with RTX in control. Uh, I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, it, it's just such a, that's such an exciting development. And, you know, I think once uh, everybody I've showed a higher refresh rate monitor to, um, they don't want to go back to 60 hertz. Um, you can't go back. No, it's can't. awful. So, you know, having that 144 hertz adaptive sync, G-Sync display um, and being able to feed it um, high quality frames at high frame rates, uh, it's just, you know, it's such an exciting um, confluence of developments. It's like if you, if you, in the past, we might've said like, okay, yeah, you upgrade your graphics card, it, it's going to make your games run faster. Um, but if, if you haven't upgraded in a very long time, you're at a point now where everything has advanced. Right. And no matter what you're looking at, uh, there are going to be significant um, improvements across the board in the gaming experience. So if, if you're building out around a 3080 uh, or 3090, I mean, it's, just, it's just an incredible time. It's, it's the kind of card that you want to build up the rest of your system around. You, yeah. you want to upgrade yeah. your monitor to get those high refresh rates, those higher resolutions. Mm -hmm. You you want to have a better system that runs the games that you, so you're not CPU bound. You want that nice mm -hmm. SSD so it, it, it goes fast. You just like, I, you have to have the best, I think, when you, when you get something like this because it, it mm -hmm. enables so much. You don't want any part of your system holding you back. Mm hmm yeah no it's it's uh it's a beast and it's gonna drive insane experiences yeah. in for years to come just looking at what we have right now it's like you guys have mentioned cyberpunk and and uh flight sim those are games that are pushing the envelope but in two years mm -hmm. what we're looking at is going to be uh, who knows right who knows what kind of mm -hmm. technology and where it'll go with ds 2.0 it's going to be really uh, a lot of fun mm -hmm. um sasha why don't you start Getting getting one of these cards alive for us. Let's get that one of these batteries right. plugged yeah, in. I want to see it. Yeah. I want to see those LEDs. We, we can keep chatting that while, you, while you get that going. Yeah. <laughs> and if you are like this, another cool thing about the Strix actually is if you is are upgrading system? an older system, uh, and you're you like okay, well, I have this five year old power supply, and I'm wondering whether it's still good enough to do this. Um, PSU's okay. like okay. age over time I, I components it, age over time and so your your power supply might not be able to keep up with the card um because modern components whether you're talking about cpus or graphics cards can go from idle power to drawing hundreds of watts in like milliseconds and yep. that that's a, a a high transient load um you know it can spike above the value you're actually going for for a brief time and uh it that um rush of current uh th that rush of demand for current can actually cause um the PSU to shut off if it's not able to provide it, um, or it, it results in other weird behavior with your system. Um, and if and you that's ever a difficult trouble, problem to troubleshoot, yeah, right. <laughs> I, I did yeah, IT you, for, you, for about a decade, <laughs> and yeah, that's it, like power well, problem. It, <laughs> yeah, power problems. Like how, are how do so you know that that's what caused it specifically? Yeah. Yeah. So P yeah, PS, yeah, PSU troubleshooting is such a. It's like oh well, I've isolated everything else. Uh, I guess I need to buy. I'm just going to throw that out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the uh, you know the Strix actually had you know all of our Strix cards for a long time have had this circuit on the power connectors where it's like you forgot to plug in the PCIe connector and we're going to flash a red light at you. 
Uh, for the Strix card in this generation, we've put a sensing circuit on the power connectors that will actually that's actually monitoring whether the PSU can serve, um, supply that transient load. And if the if it can't do it, um, and the card detects that, it'll blink at you as well. And you instead of spending hours troubleshooting and be like, what is the component that's causing like these black screens or system crashes or whatever? Um, the future is wonderful. You can say, oh well, that's yeah, amazing. The power, yeah, <laughs> it the seems power so supply, simple, but. Yeah, and you can say, oh, well, it's my power supply, and then you can just go out and buy, like, right, um, a new PSU, like one of our ROG Strix PSUs or whatever, the Thor series. Um, one of these days, we should do a, sh a show focused on just nightmares of troubleshooting, like the worst experience you ever had troubleshooting a PC and yeah. what the actual <laughs> problem was. Look forward to that in the future. That'll be great content. Oh, that's... <laughs> That'll be our I Halloween can't wait show. For that. <laughs> so our, our Halloween show will be the... The, the the Halloween show will be the haunted PC. Oh god! You know, what was the problem you could never fix? Um, so yeah, but that's um, yeah, I, that, that's a really cool feature. Hopefully, you don't have to take advantage of that. Um, and I think with um, with the the way the uh, enthusiast systems are going these days, if you're building a high end PC, you already have like an 850 watt power supply or something like that, and you you know you'll be ready. Um, so, yeah, Sasha, to get oh, we got it plugged in. Yeah, um, sorry about the colors. Um, it looks like we um, we robbed a hippie and uh, <laughs> robbed him of his dreadlocks and uh, used that as cable sleeving. Wow. Uh, so our engineers don't really care about the colors for for sleeve cables, <laughs> as you can as you can see. <laughs> uh, we borrowed this from our VGA team. They were kind enough to provide this for us. So we got the uh, impact. Mm -hmm. Mini ITX, RG Mini ITX system right here. And um, nice. yeah, I brought my PCI Express uh, riser card, 30 centimeter flexible riser card, so we can show the cards from different angles. Here we got the Tuft 3080. And uh, unfortunately, because of our mics using AI active noise canceling, you can't really hear it, but uh, we can still peel off that protective film that. You really peel want this ASMR experience. Peel. Oh, yeah. Hey, how's <laughs> yeah. <that> <laughs> <laughs> He's been talking there about ASMR all day. He just <laughs> <laughs> and on the other side, don't go too fast. Yeah, there's there's even YouTube videos Chris, of, like sound. specifically only peeling off the film, and and they have a lot of views. People just love seeing yeah. and hearing that. Yeah, the tough. We haven't actually talked about the tough card, uh, but it's it's got some nice things of its own going on. So let, let me just um, yeah, back really quick too, and, right? and let me just ask the general question: What's the difference between a Tough thirty eighty and a Strix thirty eighty? Okay, so with the Tough card, you know it's a more compact heatsink. Uh, first, I mean, obviously, you know the the big thing is it costs less, but that doesn't mean it's you know <laughs> uh, the, the 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 way we get there uh, is it's a smaller heatsink. It's a two point seven slot heatsink versus two point nine. Um, in this generation, though, that doesn't mean necessarily um, a major compromise in performance because we also broke out the, like Sasha mentioned earlier, like we broke out the memory heatsink into its own discrete uh, section. Mm. Um, and it uses the, the tough card. Again, it's not that it's, you know, we use the first generation of Axial Tech fans. So it's the all, the, all nine blades, they are still counter rotating. Um, for that better airflow at the intake side of the cooler. Um, it's got a nice metallic black shroud as the primary feature. Mm -hmm. It uh, is cool. And yeah. it's a really and sleek design. Uh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it, it's still, the Sasha turns the, oh, yeah, you can see the RGBs on the front. There's not the addressable RGB strip like you get on the Strix card. Um, that's really like, what you're paying you know, for is is the yeah, RGB. Yeah. Like Don't. That's, at least that's what I'm paying for. I know you get a lot more, but that's what I'm after. Yeah. <laughs> right. If um, I get a work card, I don't want that. I want the RGB. <laughs> yeah. So in it, it's still got the shorter shorter overall PCB. So there's still a vent on the backside of the card for air to escape from the heatsink. Um. I mean, it it's still again, it's not a matter of um giving things up it's just starting it's going from like really good to excellent um you know but the, the way i look at the strix card is is basically uh 
it, it's there are no compromises with the Strix card. Um, like the power limits, if you want to overclock, the power limit on the Strix card is, um, I think it goes up to 480 watts if you enable it in GPU tweak or wow. something. Like oh wow, that, which is yeah, that's a lot of power. It's insane. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to overclock, um, you have all that power available to you. If you want to. Um, you know, if you want to, uh, you you want the maximum customization. You have the ad addressable RGBs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you that it actually has a pair of fan headers. We call those fan connect uh, headers on the front of the card that can manage your system fans because you know a lot of motherboard fan control is based on CPU temperatures and like in a game, your CPU is not going to be often not going to be the thing that's most heavily loaded. It's the graphics card, so you can actually take a pair of system fans like at the front of your case and tie them to the GPU temperature cool. so that air air flows nice. uh, to the GPU when it needs it. I love that feature, that but I'm a cool. huge fan control nerd. <laughs> <laughs> like all my, all my fans have to be just so. Um, so Respect. yeah, so, yeah it, it's the, the Strix card doesn't, um, it, it's just, it's flexible. It's, you know, massively powerful. It's, it, yeah, it's a beast. It's it's got its own class, yeah, but you know, beast. beast is a great word. The the tough card has has always been a little bit cheaper, like you said, but the reviews are pretty darn good for this card. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's yeah. I mean, it yeah. It, it we're not again. It's like and maybe hey. I mean, also look with your case, for example. You're you know you might not have room for like a two point nine slot graphics card. That's a good point. Um, yeah, and mm -hmm. so this is a you know it's a more compact design. Um, Slight, like, you know the 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 board power doesn't go as high. But I mean, for overclocking, I mean, it's, again, there there are certain limits we have to respect here, just because of the uh, amount of raw heat that you can dissipate. But, yeah, yeah. We you have I think options. what's pretty cool is it's, of, it's, yeah. What's pretty cool is that you know it's. Uh, even the tough card is quite an upgrade compared to reference design card. You know, it's quieter and it has lower temperatures and it performs better. So mm -hmm. that's pretty pretty impressive, I think. Yeah, yeah. The price right, difference between we... it and the the founders edition are so minimal. Yeah. Like, there's there's mm -hmm. no reason not to at least step up to the tough card. Yeah, yeah. Consider it certainly. Yeah. Should we switch okay. to the? 39 you know? that's all i want to yeah, see I've, I, been, I I've been waiting this whole that's show what I'm, that's what i'm here for <laughs> yeah they didn't even invite me i just said can i come watch them i know get the 39 Intr you intruded on us made me change my overlays and everything <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey it's worth it that's worth it mm -hmm. the first look because none of us right. have seen this in person well i guess uh these guys in headquarters have been able to see these cards but Last night, only yeah. last night. So only yeah, we did a quick night. check last night, but uh, that's the first time we powered these cards up. So, so All what's right, the first game everyone's tricky. gonna play on their yeah. their thirty series card? So I'm, I'm actually I'm gonna go first. I'm super torn because I I've played a little bit of flight sim and they're adding Japan to flight sim. So I want to go fly around yeah, Japan yes, in flight sim. Um, but I also bought Control and I haven't touched it yet. And I hear nothing but Same amazing <laughs> things with control. So I'm kind of thinking control will be that first spin experience. Try to get, I'm, I want to play it in 4K uh, and try to hit that 144. Mm -hmm. Jeff, how about Ooh. you? That's, yeah, with, with uh, RTX on? Yeah. With R yeah, control is an amazing RTX mm -hmm. implementation too. So like, yeah. if, if you're trying to get the whole experience, like that's the game you want. Um, I'm really excited for um, Atomic Heart. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Yeah. Um, it's been I've delayed trailers, a few times, yeah. unfortunately. I pre-ordered it. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Oh. Um, but yeah, Control, I think right now is the nicest looking RTX title on the market for sure. And Jeff, you said you have some numbers on it. So how much can you get with a 3090 in Control with DLSS well, and ray tracing? At 8K, I think I saw one site 8K. got uh, 50. Yeah, at 8K, <laughs> someone said 55 frames per second. So it's probably that's well above that's incredible, uh, 60. Though. With ray tracing. Oh. Yeah. yeah that's wow. Still... Damn, that's, that's, that's impressive. the future of gaming. And, and how about yeah. 4K? So it's like, what, 100? Uh, yeah, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's probably, um, I mean, it's well over 60. Yeah. 
Damn. Even if you're hitting 120, that's incredible. Like that's <laughs> maybe with the 30. Anything at 4K over 60 just feels amazing to be yeah. able to do. Yeah. Um. All right, here we go. Ooh. So the RGB oh, wow. sleeve yeah. cables matching the RGB lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that looks I haven't seen that. Oh, um, that's gonna be gorgeous. Oh man. Really good looking. That looks so good. It really um, is a gorgeous card. And we're just nerding out here, guys, because we're just we want it as much as a lot of you guys. <laughs> that's what I we think, are. Jake, you were asking about it, right? Like yeah. if the light is yeah. shining on the fence. I don't know it's, if, if I can the see it. I can it see it. Yeah. Can see it. Yeah. yeah. It's picking yeah. it up. It's, oh, fence, I really like that. You know? That's cool. That looks great. And yeah, for those of you who Especially noticed that fans stop room. spinning, that's uh, they do that because the GPU is an idle. So that's one of the cool features mm -hmm. of the 3000 cards. I think our 2000 card set is already as well. So when the GPU temperature is low, the fan actually completely ramps down and stops spinning. That's nice. Yeah. Efficient. And there we yeah, go. The zero no. dB build is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, zero dB. Is. No moving parts. <laughs> I wonder how vertically mounting this card would work. Would that, Jeff? Do you know? Do you know anything? Well, you're you're still gonna see, you're gonna see that that bleed through onto the fans, which is that probably look really right. nice in a vertical mount. I'm yeah. just wondering and, about and the vent. Even on in the, the vertical top. mount, usually, usually look at it ah. slightly from above, right? So yeah. you still yeah. see that uh, RGB. Well, the nice, the the nice thing about heat is that heat rises right so even if it's blowing mm -hmm. into towards the uh into the interior of the case um it's still, yeah, it's still gonna follow the, the airflow, airflow path. path yeah so and how much is this one going for jeff you mentioned uh I, you checked the listing uh, so the the 3090 um new egg listing was at 1799 us but um that's actually better than i thought yeah well it's a titan I, card yeah. really I'm right i mean <laughs> yeah I, it's... yeah I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just sold looking at it. I'm just sold <laughs> by was, looking at the RGB. How much was the Titan RTX? It was around uh, there. I think right? it was twenty four ninety nine. Oh my! Yeah, and then so that's I mean, amazing. Think about it. This yeah. one is faster and cheaper, right? So for that kind mm -hmm. of level, for that kind of yeah. segment, this is this is actually not a bad deal at all. Yeah. If you can't well, afford it, it I, and it's, especially if you need all really, of that memory for anything. Yeah. Oh yeah, if you need 24. the memory, I think um, one of our other technical PR people was telling us how he uh, uses this real-time uh, audio uh, transcoding program that needs all of that memory. So if you're one of these people, if you if you know even if the gaming perf you know even if you're not um, taking full advantage of the gaming performance, you know, the GPU compute is and AI is such a uh, burgeoning field, and the data sets are huge. And having access to 24 gigs of RAM uh, is invaluable in those situations. And I love uh, all those you know YouTube you... videos where people use uh, AI deep learning to um, like improve the video quality. You have like mm -hmm. upsampled videos, and and they add a lot of frames yeah. and make everything sharp and smooth. And there's a lot mm -hmm. of people working on this to make past movies, like old movies, look super sharp. So you can get some old movies mm -hmm. that were shot in really low resolution, grainy on film, and they upsample it to the point where it looks like a blu-ray release you know it's really impressive mm -hmm. i can't wait for you know being able to go through all my old movies all my collection and just upsample everything and get it buttery smooth 60 fps huh. all those yeah. old fascinating and, and extra contrast and sharpness and everything it looks amazing i've seen some mm -hmm. uh, cartoon and manga that were like upsampled and it looks it looks totally different it looks so mm -hmm. much nicer you're letting AI upgrade your manga? That's, that's yeah, that's next level. <laughs> that's, that's the plot that's, of a bad. That's manga. what Elon Musk would do, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what else would oh, you use? That was just a gorgeous card. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm just. I, I just want to sit here and keep looking at it for a while. We're, we're, yeah. We're, we're all. So those, those are individually addressable RGB cables. LEDs. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Sasha, what Those was are it? addressable. Addressable RGBs, yep. Mm -hmm. So each one, each of these lines is like a separate LED, and you can control each of them individually. I think mm -hmm. that's, yeah, that will be the eventual yeah. goal with Armory Crate. Nice. So then mm -hmm. I can also just set it to whatever color I want, like alternating, like uh, yeah. green, blue, green, Pulsing blue, or something from... like that. Mm -hmm. 
Nice. Just a static like red. Eight, yep. eight different modes. Yeah. Um, that, that's really cool. Like an Aura Creator yeah, app? No, just Armory Crate, I think, for the moment. Armory. Oh, okay. Future, future versions of Armory Crate. I don't know if it'll be compatible with Aura Creator. That would be awesome. Like I love Aura Creator, how you can have all different ROG peripherals and motherboard and everything, and yeah. you can like have a wave running over all of your stuff and match it all mm -hmm. up. That that's super cool. I'm sure it'll be doable. Maybe not at launch, but I'm sure that yeah. will be an option yeah. uh, on the table. And yeah, and I'm I'm excited to be able to see thermals from that. I know that's that's going to be in a future armor, future Armory Crate update. Yeah. But being able to use those addressable R R <clears throat> LEDs to look and just just look inside my case and it's like i know what the temperatures are i don't i don't need mm -hmm. a special yeah. monitor i don't need a piece of software mm -hmm. telling me i just have a big visual cue that says red it's it's running at whatever i've set that to so that's yeah Yo, you that's have like a bar it goes from here to here mm -hmm. it's like 20 yeah. and 25 30 35 yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's gonna be great yeah um the the PSU plugin, it's it's what eight pin. How many pins are on? Yeah, three it, three eight know, pin triple, connectors. Three eight pin. Triple yeah. eight pin. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think we're, we're it not doesn't... pulling any of the power from the PCIe connector, correct? Right. We're, yeah, we're pulling it all the, from the yeah. power. The goal there was, I think, to just yeah. I mean, take um, lessen the load on the motherboard and the uh, associated power circuitry. Yeah, because if you go straight to the power supply, that's where you know you get you know stable voltages, you get less noise mm -hmm. and everything. For the motherboard, you never know, right? So this is definitely the best way to power the card. If you're, and using, if you're using our motherboards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we don't know that, right? People might be plugging this into other motherboards. Yeah. So but yeah, yeah, you never know. And so uh, with especially, I mean, again, with that level, the amount that you can crank up the board power on the Strix, uh, you don't want to leave anything to chance. I think there's. And I, think... I I just personally don't want to run that through my motherboard. I want all of it going directly from the PSU to the GPU with a card mm -hmm. that's that's pulling you know upwards of 400 watts of power. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I don't want to run that through any other component. Just no. you know, on principle. No. Uh, and I think one thing about this card and and just the the Strix cards in general is they have a very distinct look. I feel like they've always had kind of a distinct mm -hmm. look. Like I've got a 1080 Strix. Uh, on my sheet, my machine over my second machine over there, which, you know, I look at that and I see the same thing. So a lot of people that are planning their new builds are going to be looking for a specific aesthetic. And when we're talking about mixing and matching things like, yes, we do have nice motherboards that would look great with this, but finding that perfect case, mm -hmm. finding that aesthetic. Um, and even one of the questions we, we put some tweets out, one of the questions I saw multiple times is people just asking for a white edition. And um, consider, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can even answer this for you just mm. based on the fact that these cards are impossible to get as it is. Sure, maybe eventually. <laughs> I mean, we're not going to tell you a yes or no right now, though, because we're just trying to make them and get them out, period. Um, but it's cool to think about, you know, having that perfect white build maybe if someday that will exist. Um, mm -hmm. Who knows? Oh, I just yeah, saw we, we have the some pretty fan beautiful white cards. So I can't wait. Do what? Oh, nice. I just saw the fan headers on the card. So they're they're here uh, at the opening where the fan next to the power connectors is blowing some of the air through the card. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where you have two four pin fan headers. And that's where you can plug in the case fans, like you mentioned, Jeff, right? Uh huh, exactly. Oh, nice. And then those case fans are directly controlled by the GPU. So when yeah. the GPU fans stop, then those case fans stop. And when the GPU fans run at 100%, then the case fans also run at 100%. Right. Cool. Yeah, that's the nice. default behavior. That's I've, really I've cool been behavior. in, I've oh, been yeah. in a GPU tweak before, and I think you can set because they're obviously. Oh, you can even change it. Yeah, you can change the curve for those oh, that's headers. Nice. Because you don't, I, I think the intake. If you don't want your intake fans to stop, like if you want, you have high powered yeah. components in your system. You don't necessarily want zero airflow coming in from right. the intake side of the case. So you can manage that independently of the graphics card fan curve. That's really cool. Yeah, I would not want my case fans to stop entirely because uh, eventually you'll also get this oscillation where you know the fan stops, so it gets warmer, then the fans turn on, then it gets cold, yeah. and then the fans turn off. Yeah. So 
Yeah. Although, I mean, these fans, they keep turning on and off every, like, I don't know, like a minute or so, but I don't no. hear anything. They're super the quiet. Card, That's cool. Yeah. I mean, then the card's not in a case either. So it's hard to, like, it, it, it's expecting some airflow. So I don't know if you'd see that. The technical term is hysteresis um, yeah. in an actual case. So. Oh, yeah. You're right. It would be the, the temperature would not change that quickly, right? Yeah, because yeah. ideally you'd have an exhaust fan going. Like if you if you're like me and you have a 240 millimeter closed loop cooler in the top of your case for your CPU, like there's air moving at all times anyway. Mm. So, or you have an open system like me, yeah. <laughs> but then you have to worry about dust. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> and uh, people annoying. touching the components and getting their fingers yeah. stuck in the fans. <laughs> <laughs> or your child walking up and that's time. why i've got mine in a case <laughs> yeah my baby uh so far i can't move but later uh, i have to really worry about it uh, getting too close to the system and every time like yeah family or relatives or friends come over everybody's like oh what's this like don't touch it <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's 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 why all my test benches are in an office with a closed door so the cats can't get to it oh yeah cats Smart. cats too you have to be careful yeah. Yeah. I've had a few broadcasts. For the sake where, of the cats. Where, where yeah. they, uh, yeah, they just hit the power adapter. And game over. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. So obviously we, we've talked a lot about these cards. Um, Sasha, are we going to see these coming to desktops? Are, are pre-built, I assume? Because yes, we have a lot of people who are enthusiasts that want to build their own machine, but there's some people that would rather just buy a pre-built. Yeah. Uh, when you don't have the time or are just not interested in building your own system, um you can get one of our ready-made rg desktop systems so we got a g35 and a g15 desktop here so for those of you who are not familiar with them the g15 is like a regular compact tower case and the g35 is pretty much the g15 plus a second case slapped on the back um so you have a dual chamber design and that allows us to move all the stuff that you don't really want to see, like the power supply cables and the hard drive cage and all the other stuff, to the secondary chamber. Um, I'll just get rid of this and then pull over the G35, yeah. which I have hidden on another table here. See, I'm personally just excited to see the 3090 plugged into a machine and running. I want to see how well it fits, because it's a big card. That card yeah. is massive. Like, I'm, I'm not even sure it would fit in my current case. I would have to rethink uh, my chassis. It does fit is... in this one. So there we yeah. have our G35. And mm -hmm. let me power it on. There you see the RGB LED strip in the front, similar to what we mm -hmm. got on the card. So it's a multi-zone RGB strip. Nice. And yeah, pretty cool design. Really nice design. Um, Clearly yeah. airflow optimized. You can see we have a hidden SSD hot swap bay here in the front. Ooh. So just plug and play SSDs. Um, we got uh, is it? there we go. Headset hook right here. So that's really convenient. You can just hook your headset in right there. Um, really nice front IO. And yeah, it's a tempered glass side panel. This is the currently available GA35, right? This is what's on the market right now. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, you can see the card is vertically mounted. You can see this is a 2080 Ti Strix, and there's going to be a version with the 3090 Strix. For, for my G35. amusement, for my amusement, hold the 3090 up so we can see roughly what it would look like. Because I, <laughs> we need to at least imagine. Right. I, I just want to. I want to believe. It doesn't yeah, fit. Yeah, it's going to look. <laughs> I can hold it. It does. It does. It does. <laughs> It's a tight squeeze, but it does. It does. Yeah, it does fit. It's going to look so good in there. <laughs> Just barely. I love it. That's cool. Yeah, so there we have the G35. And now let me show you the G15 as well. So um, from the back of the case, you can also see. Oh, it's a um, big boy. Yeah, that this is, chamber just... this is the main mm. chamber, right? So the G15 is essentially just this part of the system. So this is like a G15, and the G35 has the secondary chamber slapped on the back. And that's where you have all the cables, hard drive cage, and the power supply as well. So in the front, all you really have is the motherboard, the CPU, and the GPU. So you can see 
it's really great for airflow. You have air coming in in the front and then going out the, the top and, and the rear. And uh, yeah, that's the G35. And now let me show you the G15. The G15 is also going to get a refresh um, and also going to come with the 30 series cards in a little while. <laughs> soon, TM. Right? Coming soon, trademark. And yeah, I mean, that's the whole thing. You know, we, we know the RTX 3070 is coming. We don't know all the details of it yet, but we know it's coming soon. So the, the, 30, the 30 series is not done by any means. Yeah, and yeah. there's <laughs> possibly, maybe, going to be even more 30 series cards. Could possibly happen. 3095. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. So here 30, you have the G15, and yeah, it's pretty much oh, a nice slim version case. of the G35. You still got the tempered glass, and it's a special tempered glass. This is lead lead glass, so it's EMI shielded, um, and yeah, still has the oh, same really nice design. It has the same RGB LED strip in the front, and for this one, it has a PSU shroud. So for this one, the power supply is in the front in the main chamber, but to hide the power supply and the cables, there's a PSU shroud, uh, which is pretty nice. Yeah, it's gotten a bit oh, more nice. common nowadays for newer towers. Just yeah, nobody, wants nobody to really that. wants to see. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's it's like, uh, you know, all the power supply manufacturers are so sad. <laughs> you just hide your PSU, maybe have like an SSD bay down at the bottom or your hard drive bay and uh, call it a day. Yeah, I, I know some people who work for power supply vendors you know and it's like they put so much effort into making power supplies look good we got our own rg thor power supplies as well we do everything to make them look so nice and you can like customize them and change the the thing on the side the design we bundle several different things you can put on there to make it look nice but then most people just want to hide it <laughs> well, if you get the um, it's it's not about the hiding the psu it's all those cables that come out of the psu you don't want to see yeah, yeah at least for me true. jeff what was that <laughs> yeah and uh, I was going to say, we actually have a, um, our, gosh, I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, the ROG Helios case is actually specifically designed to show off the Thor uh, power supply. So you only see the, the, night, the parts of the Thor that you want to see, and you know, the rest is um, shielded away. Does the Thor but, have yeah, RGB we, we, on it? We, it sure does. <laughs> yes. We, we, it we has an it. OLED display on it. It has an OLED display that can show you the current power draw. And I think you can customize it even, That's right? That's cool. Yeah, the Thor, the Thor does have that display. And the, the Helios case is specifically designed to show it off. So it, it all goes together real nice. When I hear the Thor and I think of a PC component, all I see in my head is the starcraft 2 unit thor and that's all i can imagine right now but <laughs> anyways um very cool i mean are there any things we didn't dive into that we want to discuss jeff no i think we've i think we've pretty much covered it so I'm... i mean the, the two of you are using some of the nvidia broadcast features oh that's true I notice oh that, yeah that jake there's, there's whole... uh, that that background looks really familiar Something about all those spatulas. So the yeah. feature I'm using is the Jensen spatula? Kitchen. It's it, yep. But uh, I'm actually just green screening this as I normally would for stream. But Jeff is using oh, okay. NVIDIA Broadcast and actually removing he is in a... Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, because <laughs> that's normally just your room, right? That's not a green screen. That's a normal room. And yep. this is my office and my sort of testing lab. And uh, Broadcast is replacing the background, and it's also doing uh, noise cancellation on my voice. And it's working real well. It's working like really well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you were you were typing on your 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 switches your keyboard and we, we couldn't hear anything. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. Oh, you got a blue mechanical keyboard? Blue switches? I've got a red. I've got a red keyboard, but it's still clacky. But I've also had a yeah. helicopter taking off, and I've had train horns going on. You can't hear any of it. It's All nice. tonight? <laughs> wow. Uh, out of curiosity, yeah. like, can you guys hear my keyboard? No. Nothing. A little bit. A little bit. Oh, when you're talking, bit. like the when moment when you say something and mm. I pay attention to it, I can hear it. 
because I'm not using RTX voice or anything. I'm just, you know, that's that's my uh, my audio interface trying to muddle that. But it just shows that that's a professional piece of equipment trying to clean my audio, whereas this is just the new default software built in and it's doing a better job. That's pretty cool. Also, I'm using a green screen and, uh, you know, a lot of lighting to achieve what I have. And Jeff is getting the same result where you probably have a light on your desk. You have a light. Oh, I have two. I have like two uh, seventy-two inch umbrellas in front of me too. Okay, but they, they, and lighting does make a big difference <laughs> for any of this kind of thing because it helps define you when it comes to doing that. But you know, a lot of people are interested in getting into streaming, and these new tools from Nvidia are really going to make that yeah. a much easier and more accessible experience. Because you know, a thirty seventy, um, uh, the entry price point is, is quite low and you're, you're getting a top end machine that's basically as powerful as a, mm-hmm. as a 2080 ti and you're getting all these tools with it yeah. even this awesome yeah and yeah uh jake yeah. you were saying you got some really professional audio gear there with similar results and how much is that um my mic and the audio mm-hmm. interface are about i think i spent about 800 dollars total for that there you go, right? That's like yeah, half the price of the new RTX and, 2000 series card. So, <laughs> yeah, this is all this is all right in the card. You know, it's all running right on the the hardware, so you don't have to make that separate investment. So, yeah, the the platform features are really nice too. Yeah, and that's all you can do right now. I mean, there's so many options. Uh, you can do even more of this in the future, probably, right? With mm-hmm. all the tensor cores, there's more and more stuff coming out all the time. I'm sure we'll find we'll see more and more ways. Um, is the to, yeah take advantage of that power? The Nvidia Manga. broadcast is Manga. that beta technically? Manga. Do what? Do you know if it's beta I'm the, sure the broadcast it or if it's official like 1.0? I can't remember. So yeah, I think elements of broadcast are in 1.0 and like the the background replacement is um, in beta. That's in beta okay. according to the app. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you can download it and try it today. Try now. Yeah. Well, guys, link in description. You, yeah. Um, if you're, this is your first time tuning in. This is a new podcast series we're doing every week on Thursday nights uh, here in the U.S. And I guess if you're in Asia, like some of these handsome gentlemen, that's going to be Friday morning. Um, we talk about a different point every Friday week. This weekend. is all about technology <laughs> and the products that are coming out uh, all through ROG every single week. So we've got some, you know, laptop deep dives. We're going to do some teardowns coming up. We've talked about liquid metal in the past and how that's applied to your laptops to increase the performance of that machine and why that makes a big difference. You can check out those VODs on our YouTube. That's at just youtube.com slash A-S-U-S-R-O-G. Um, and here on Twitch, all the past broadcasts are there as well. So please hit that follow button on our Twitch account. Check us out on social media, all the good stuff. We we will follow up on these RTX cards. Yeah, we will be following up because um, none of us have actually played games on them yet, right? We're all excited to get that firsthand experience and and, and really, really try to push it. Like I've got certain, I have my own agenda. Chris has his own agenda. Sasha, Jeff, we all want to try different things once we do, like you guys, finally get our hands on these cards and we'll be doing more of a a follow-up like this is what we act this is the realistic gains we've seen this is what i'm able to do on a for for, for me it's going to be 4k 144 hertz so look forward to that that future mm-hmm. content um any shout outs you guys want to give shout outs to nvidia that's what i'll do i'll steal that ha easy <laughs> <laughs> yeah we love you nvidia send us 3090s um <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Star Wars Squadrons. Like I'm, Ooh, that's yeah. that's another game that I'm really looking forward to to playing on this. And I know I think Jake, you're you're planning on playing that on a different stream look coming at, up. Right? Look at you setting me up for that segue. We've got another stream coming up here. We're going to be on Fridays on on the U.S. time. We're going to be playing a, a different game every week. We're going to be doing just Let's Play style streams, showing off what we can do with our hardware, what performance we can achieve in certain games using that hardware. And uh, Star Wars Squadrons. I mean, I'm a big Star Wars nerd. I like flight sims. I have, I own multiple flight sticks. Like I'm an, I have foot pedals for some games. Like I'm an enthusiast. <laughs> and uh, Squadrons. I, I can't wait oh, to I see to how I can tinker and create a really unique uh, control setup because I want to play with dual joystick and foot pedals to pilot 
my TIE fighter. I'm for the Empire, rebel scum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, you're going to get a lot of hate for that on Twitter. I think. Good. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> All right, guys. I, yeah, I I'm think... looking forward to play that as well. The Quest Two once it uh, arrives. Oh yeah, VR. Oh mm -hmm. my God, we could. We're gonna have to VR do a support. whole. Okay, so be... so I mean, we're we're just nerding out about Star Wars Squadrons, and we we could just kind of go in and keep going. But I'm gonna cut us off because we're also gonna be launching a gaming podcast in the near future, where that's exactly what it is. Sit back, chat, talk about video games, and just nerd out. That'll be coming mm -hmm. very soon. All here, twitch.tv slash ASUSROG. Guys, that's going to do it for episode number three. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.